Hello folks, welcome back again. I'm the one the only I am a hobo Tom. Now I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling as usual. Yep, sorry these videos for some reason get pushed up pushed back a day, but life happens. Uh yep, whole bunch of stuff happened yesterday. Gotta get back to work today, so I have to make this kinda quick. So we'll see how fast I can do an episode of Raw. Gonna try and keep this. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. This chair actually does go down. I just learned that. That's good. Not that comfortable, but that's okay. For me, I just have to make this go faster. Let's start talking about Raw. So we have an Edge recap. And a Becky Lynch promo with Shauna. And a whole Elimination Chamber recap. Yep. First 15 minutes of the show. Did not need to watch. And our first match was Rey Mysterio taking on Angel Garza. Oh, bien, bien, bien. Bien, bien, bien. Just like Dr. Wagner Jr. And some lucky senora got a kiss. Wait a second. I thought WWE instituted a no-touch policy because of this coronavirus. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, so I'll tell you what, this match was amazing. Rey Mysterio still has it. I don't know how the man has aged, but he can still go 100 miles an hour. Angel Garza is capable of doing everything, it seems like. This match was so fast. Again, the Mexican arm drags. Oh, I like that. I remember first seeing that from Tito Santana. I think it was Gorilla Monsoon called them Mexican arm drags. Way back in the day. That was awesome. Lena Vega's on the ring apron. She does distract people a little bit. And, and whoa! How does Lena Vega walk in those heels? Those heels are like huge. How does she get in the ring with those? That's amazing balance. Um, there's a lot of back and forth in this match. Very fast paced action. Ray. Eventually, he does his slide splash and then hits a seated senton when he comes back into the ring. Uh, Angel Garza tries to go for the wing clipper. Not happening. And he also did that awesome looking Scott Reserve reverse suplex. That almost looks like a finisher, folks. Oh, a reverse brain buster. That sounds like a cool finishing move. Some wrestler's going to steal that from me, I guess. And he countered the 619. Uh, he also countered the Lucha Destroyer. Try to roll up for that. Uh, eventually, Ray did come back. He hit the 619 and the seated senton. Ray Mysterio wins. Good for him. This was a fun match. This was a good surf and turf match. I hope for WrestleMania they have like a ladder match. Rey Mysterio, Angel Garza, Umberto Carrero, and Andrade. I hope that's I hope that's in the works for WrestleMania. If, if not, WrestleMania is going to be long. We had a Seth in the back with AOP. He brought some popcorn. Murphy's with him. He finds Kevin Owens. He's eating some popcorn. Popcorns are good. Some popcorn in a few weeks. That's, that'll be yummy. And oh wow, that is. I also figure that it's a weird pay week because pay week doesn't correspond to grocery getting day. So I'll figure that out. But again, he's in the back. Yep, offers Kevin. He talks to Kevin Owens. Gets Kevin Owens gets beat up. And some popcorn. He goes around passing popcorn around. And then back in the ringside. Oh, yeah, we have Charlotte Flair. How much higher could that dress be cut? I wanted to see her bend over and see all of Charlotte. Well, you can already see all of Charlotte in, in, her, in her nude pics, which is kind of impressive, really. I don't know, Charlotte has, like, abs. Like pronounced abs, and I don't know. At seeing 
like thick abs on a woman is kind of weird. Like I just like to like a little tummy, but I don't know. It's probably some of the And then Rhea Ripley comes out. Yep, there's those who are going to clash at WrestleMania. Then we have Bobby Lashley taking on Zack Ryder. And wow, poor Zack Ryder is, is jobber to everyone now. Because the first thing Zack Ryder eats is a shoulder tackle. I mean, Bobby Lashley, for the most part, beats up Zack Ryder. Yeah, Zack Ryder gets in a few punches and, and hits. Ooh. Yeah, for the most part, this was just a dominator. Well, that's, that's how Bobby Lashley finishes match. And it was a squash match. For the most part, Zack Ryder had no chance. It would have been better if um, Kurt Hawkins would have gotten involved, at least. It would be a DQ win instead of just a squash win. And that was a chant. We want Lana. No, we don't Lana. But this match itself was a ham sandwich of a match. Then we have uh, Brock Lesnar and Drew McIntyre Royal Rumble recap. But then uh, Seth, backstage we have Seth and Aleister Black. Uh, Aleister Black did not accept the shirt. Again, the way to join a faction, folks, is that you have to get a shirt. It's like I have this amazing machine gun Carl Anderson shirt. And in a few more weeks, I'm going to get my Macho Man shirt again. My newer Macho Man shirt. That's going to be awesome. It's when Pro Wrestling Tees has, I think they have their 20% off deal for WrestleMania. It's always a good thing. I forget if it's 20% off or, or buy four, get the fifth one free. They have like some really great promotion. Probably in another one, two, three, three more weeks. That sounds about right. Where did I get this? Oh, I got this for a Bullet Club day. And the machine gunner, Carl Anderson. Final guy. So Alistair Black refused the shirt, but gives Seth credit for knocking on his door to pick a fight with me. So that's going to set up Aleister Black and Seth Rollins later. On the next match we have, we have Eric Rowan and Drew McIntyre. Drew. Drew is awesome. Uh, Eric Rowan comes down with a cage with that, that terrible spider thing. I do like the fact that Raw finally put a kibosh on this whole what's in the cage thing starting last week and culminating this week. That's actually not bad. Normally just like, oh, let it die or, or they, they either screw it up somehow and it like they, they just say no, that's it. Or it goes on way too long and it just gets boring, but this was the perfect timing. Uh, so Eric Rowan comes up his cage on the steps, Drew McIntyre. She just <laughs> He enters the ring, he steps over the cage, walks right up to Rowan. Uh, starts off with a trade of blows. Ryan tried, uh, Rowan tried very early for the Iron Claw Slam. That would have been impressive. But no, Drew Mac, this is Drew McIntyre we're talking about. Drew McIntyre is way too big. Uh, he had a belly to belly on Rowan over, to go over the rope. You go to the out, oh, on the outside. You wrestle on the outside. And Drew McIntyre takes that cage. Takes it off the steps, puts it on the ground, takes the stair steps, and crushes the cage, squishing the spider. That was the best thing Eric Drew McIntyre has done yet. And then they he get, they get in the ring a little bit more strikes. Uh, Future Shock DDT. Three, two, one. Play more. And that's it. Uh, Drew McIntyre wins. 
This is really good, and my phone's going off again like it has all morning long. So this is what happens when I'm here in the morning on, on Tuesday. I'm, uh, it's not even worth bothering to get. It'll go to answer. Most of the time, it's just garbage stuff. I know primaries are coming up soon here in Florida. So, if it's important enough, they'll leave a message. Let's see here. Please leave a message. Oh, nope, nothing there. Well, this match was really good, though. This is a good quality cheeseburger match. Yeah, next week I'm supposed to be in early. Let's say. I don't know. Whatever. Then we have a Beth Phoenix kind of update and recap with all that stuff. And then our next match. Wow, this is going quite quick. I should make these a lot faster. Sometimes it takes like hours. But nope, not this show. This this raw actually went by really quick, which is good. We have the Kabuki Warriors come up to the ring. Asa starts speaking Japanese in the what cadence. So every time she would pause, what? Which actually makes sense because no one understands what she's saying. She sounds angry about something. She wants to fight someone. She tells us her wrist. I think she wants a challenge. Issues open challenge. Uh, Kairi Sane asks about her wrist. Um, Kairi Sane laughs a lot, which is kind of cre creepy. I like weird anime schoolgirl laugh creepy. But so again, she, well, what? Every time she spoke, what? And then Natalia and Liv Morgan come, come down to the ringside. Yeah, they're just like throwing random women there. I do think the Iconics are back in Australia. I should take a look at that. Again, that's not something I clue about, so don't say that's fact. I know over, I think just a little quick news bite, some uh, company that handles pension funds, I forget what it's called, was suing the WWE because of a drop in stock price and credit it to some blogger. And it was a rather well-known blogger, but <laughs> yeah, that's not going to hold up. Um, they're suing for insider trading, but based on a podcast. Yeah, that's not going to go far in the legal system, I think. But, so... Uh, Back to the point, uh, Natalia and Liv show up. Uh, Kyrie beats up Liv a little bit. Uh, and then, of course, Kyrie does a miscue. She gets dropped, kind of neck first into the ropes and step over toe hold. It's good to see. Liv's actually becoming a really good wrestler. Her and Carmella, ever since coming up from NXT, have, have really improved by leaps and brown, bounds, which is amazing to see. Uh, Natalia then. Gets in, tried the sharpshooter. No, that wasn't happening way too early for that. Kabuki Warriors, they regroup outside the ring like smart heels always should. And then Ruby Riot shows up. What's Ruby Riot doing here? Maybe this is another match. This is my prediction for WrestleMania. We will have an obviously, hopefully, a four a four way ladder match. And we'll have a triple threat of the Riot Squad. And of course, AJ versus Undertaker, Brock versus um, Drew McIntyre. Oh, their opening bell royal. That's going to be a long freaking Sunday. I wonder if I'm working that Sunday. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, so live. Again. Second rope, second rope something. Oh, it's the second rope dropkick. That was actually pretty cool. 
And then Asuka tags in. Asuka just... Oh, Asuka's kicks are so vicious looking. Asuka's so good. I just watched two episodes of Kana Chun TV. Besides this show, it's the best show online, probably, besides a few others. This is one of my favorites. Um, going in raw, the Cornette drive through. Ups and downs, WTS. Death Battle. Uh, what's the other one? Eckhart's Ladder, Oculus and Pyrrhus, Kanachan's, Kanachan's up there. It's just so funny to walk her, to watch her walk into a bookstore. She makes it, she makes going to Barnes and Noble seems really interesting. And then of course they just double team the heck out of Natalia. They were doing all the classic heel double team spots. The arm ringer into the double axe handle blow from the top rope. And they tagged up. We'll do this again. So then Kyrie Sane did that. Uh, or Kyrie Sane did that. Asuka got in. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Kyrie Sane did it first. Then, then she, she, she got in. And then Asuka tagged her, did the same thing. And then Asuka tagged Kyrie Sane. And she did the double knees to the arm. Ouch! I don't care what, I don't care how choreographed it is. That looks amazing. Uh, then Asuka tags back in. She starts to go for the submission move. So we have the guillotine. She went for the Kamara first. Uh, transitioned that into the guillotine choke. and. And then Sarah Logan showed up. That's weird. And then Sarah Logan and Ruby Riot on the outside of the ring just just start a hockey fight. Liv Morgan sees that, climbs to the top of the rope, lands on those. Two. Wait a second, Liv Morgan, your tag team partner needs you. Because then it was two on one. Poor Natalia just got beat up again. It was a Kimura into transitioned into a guillotine choke. Uh, Natalie did get out of that, and then it's just like one kick to the head. The shiniest wizard. Little Asuka finished the match. Kabuki Warriors won. I'll tell you what, I enjoyed this match. This was fun. It was a surf and turf match. We have AJ Styles. Um, he called out The Undertaker, yep. Uh, Randy Orton tried to give an interview. He not saying anything. Let me think of consequence. Kind of linked. Then we had Riddick Moss and Cedric Alexander for the 24-7 belt. At least they're not doing the whole Benny Hill chase scene, which is kind of an improvement. Uh, Cedric Alexander, he got caught. He started off pretty fast, pretty hot. Um, he did get caught, though. Riddick Moss is too strong. Riddick Moss, again, uh, I forget what his gimmick is, but he's like a personal trainer now. He actually, he actually looks the part of a personal trainer, too. Applies a chin lock. And then you get the quick strikes by Cedric Alexander, but he gets tossed into the corner. The driving shoulder and some ragdoll tossed into the turnbuckle. Ooh. That could go bad so many ways. But Cedric Alexander sounds like a champ. Uh, Riddick Moss, I, I forget what his finish is. It's just like a basic like power slam thing. But Riddick Moss retains. I'll tell you what. It was good to see Cedric Alexander and Riddick Moss on TV. This is a cheeseburger match. They're making this 24-7 belt actually feel a little bit more like a TV like a TV title where it's defended every day on TV. Or every TV show. Again, they should have had a TV title or, or network title or, or something different than 24-7. They still could have used the ugly green belt. It just could have said something different. Like, the, uh, like I know YouTube gives away the little black medallions for, like, something. I forget if it's... I forget if it's views or what. But I know they give those away. 
after like a hundred thousand I forget if it was like a hundred thousand or a million something. One day I hope to get one of those. I'll put that there. Oh, there we go. On the door of wrestling. Then Yeah, so this was actually pretty cool. I got a cheese. Oh, yeah, I already did that. Yeah, cheeseburger match. Then we have MVP and Edge. Ev, MVP gets concertoed. Randy Orton gets out. Randy Orton comes out. Oh, stare down. That's amazing. Randy Orton realizes that, yes, it's time to pay the piper. Ooh, that's another good WrestleMania. So I think I have. Five WrestleMania matches set. Probably five more to go. WrestleMania's like all day. Wait a second. It's eight hours. There's going to be like 20 matches. There's going to be at least 16 if it's eight hours. I don't know. It took eight hours. It's like a five hour. It's like, yeah, five, six hours. I need more matches. Yeah, five. Uh, then Brock Lesnar's there. Again, another recap of Brock. Uh, Edge does an inter interview. He's obviously going to go after Randy. He's, he and Randy Orton will have a match, WrestleMania. That's a WrestleMania moment for them. Then we have Seth Rollins taking on Aleister Black. Oh, starts off with classic Matt Wrestling. And, and Jerry the King is way too into this religious stuff. The feeding of the masses with popcorn. Listen, popcorn is easy to multiply. But at least they didn't say anything about crucifixions and, and other weird religious stuff. So it starts off classic Matt Wrestling. Um, oh, Alistair Black is so nasty with those kicks. Uh, then he just taunts. Seth by sitting in the ring. It's like quick pop down. Yep. Alistair Black's amazing. Now the strikes by Alistair Black. Ooh, and Seth has that knee to the midsection. He counters that. Seth's gonna strike two. There's a sling blade. Two two and then what was Seth's best known for? Rest hold media. Yeah, rest hold mania. Chin locks, head locks, arm bars by Seth. The running knee is pretty good. A black st strikes goes to the ropes. Murphy, though. I am Murphy. Interferes. He costs Seth Rollins the match because Alistair Black was about ready to black mass. Seth Rollins, Murphy was having none of that. We have a film, a dusty old stuff and tough mess, baby. This is the Crab cake and mock tender steak. It ain't no filet mignon lobster match. I know that, but it's still a tough and tough dust the finish match, baby. And of course. Alistair Black gets beat up by Murphy. The Viking Raiders want to beat beat up. They want to get they want to kind of pick the carcass of Alistair Black as well. Then the Viking Raiders show up, beat up AOP. Alistair Black kind of rolls out of the ring. Uh, Viking Raiders get beat up by Seth Murphy and Authors of Pain. And then the Street Profits come in. You know what that means, folks? Holla, 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 player! We're going to have an eight-man tag, an impromptu eight-man tag match. Yeah. And as they're getting things set up, as they're getting people organized, Paul Heyman gives a little promo. And then we have the final match of the night. And it's good to see Raw go out on a wrestling match for a change. We have Seth Rollins and AOP taking on the Viking Raiders and Street Profits. AOP and, and Viking Raiders think they're in New Japan. They started to beat the heck out of each other. That was good to see. Then there was a yay booze between Ford, Montez Ford, and Seth Rollins. Seth is so, so good at being a heel. Now there was a hot... 
You can do the two, go back and forth. Uh, Seth, eventually all the heels are smart. They take out all the faces. So no one can tag. I think Dawkins tag. Dawkins got in. Um, after a little bit of a beating, he makes the hot tag to Ford. He drop kicks everyone. Drop kicks for everyone, folks. Then Seth is the master of the chin law. Rest hold mania. I think that was the biggest complaint about the Seth Rollins Dean Ambrose match. It's all a headlock. Like, yeah, at least do something like punch him, do something dirty. Like, take out some, like a cheese grater, like put him in a headlock, find a cheese grater, and hit him over there with a cheese grater. Do something with that headlock or chin lock to make it interesting. I mean, you could put the, the, the chin lock, you have it there, grab his nose, rake the eyes. At least people in other promotions, Impact, uh, New Japan to some degree, AEW, when they put a headlock or chin lock in, the heels at least do something to make it a little bit more than just a rear chin lock. Again, the MJF put Cody in a chin lock and then started to rake his eyes. That makes sense. Um, Hernando and Ortiz. Again, Tiger Claws. It's, it's, it's the headlock. Even Jericho, I think, gave like one guy noogies. He gave him like noogies one day. It's annoying, but at least it's something the crowd can react to. Besides, oh, headlock. Oh my gosh! Look at him rake the eyes! Look at him close the nose! Uh oh. Technical difficulties. Actually, I think I, I got towards the uh, magic like half hour mark. I've been, that means I've been talking too long. Yeah, like I was saying though, if I put someone in Shin Lock, bring him to the mat. Ah, bite him! Make it interesting, especially if you're a heel. That makes more sense than whatever he does. Then, let's see here. So again, master of the chin lock. Uh, Ford eventually, he tries to hulk up and then gets backdrop for his effort. Ivar gets in. Yes, yes. The big guy starts doing cartwheels, starts flying. For a guy his size to fly, it kind of reminds me of like a Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam Bigelow is one of the first big guys that could really fly. Actually, started to go to the top rope. Him and Vader. Vader used to do the Vader, Vader bomb. Uh, then, of course, we have, the, we have the individual spots. Everyone gets their chance to come in the ring and gets do their move. They do a move and then get knocked out. The frog splash onto Murphy, except for Seth saved that. Uh, Ford. Again, everyone's on the outside brawling. Ford just does a splash. Outside, uh, Seth does isolate, I think Ford, uh, hits him with a curb stomp. Yep, that was it. Seth Murphy and the authors of Pain Win, and Kevin Owens shows up. He starts stunning everyone except for Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins stomps on KO, kind of steps over KO. And then I don't know what's going to happen because I just hope they don't cruise. They tried that in ECW. Did not go over well. Uh, this match overall, though, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was really good. Um, I like the character work by everyone. It was, it, was a, it was actually pretty entertaining for an eight-man match. It was a cheeseburger match. And that was raw. Actually, it was a pretty entertaining. I don't think there was anything less than a cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Whoa. Surf and truth. Yeah. I'm impressed. That was a really good showing by Raw. The weird thing is, and Raw had Raw does have a tendency to do this. They actually tend to have. Better shows after the pay-per-view than the actual pay-per-view itself, which is weird. It doesn't make much sense. 
But yeah, I'll say that was probably a surf and turf raw. And with that being said, um, this will go up Tuesday sometime-ish, whenever I can find time. Well, today is Tuesday, so it's going up later. Uh, I have to work today, so that means there's no Impact Wrestling. Wednesday, I do the double show, because I actually have to work during the day Wednesday, so I can't watch the replay of Impact. Uh, so that means Wednesday, it's going to be NWA Wrestling. And a e and my AEW show Thursday I get to relax a little bit. Friday is going to be SmackDown, and then Saturday you can see this guy, the one, the only Hobo Tom, here in Daytona Beach at the Multicultural Center for a live show of NXT. I have my camera getting charged up. I have to find my little notebook. Oh, there's my little notebook. Take my notes in so that I can tell you guys. What happens in NXT because it's been a really long time since WWE's been here to Daytona Beach. I don't know if it's because of the Daytona Beach crowd or the fact that they've doing live tapings and they can't send stars out to do stuff all over the place. I don't know. I think I do think it has a little to do with both. The Daytona Beach crowd is really Gone south. Although it's bike week, so you'll get the casual fan. biker fan here. God, biker. But then you'll also you get fans like me show up that don't have to work. Well, I have to work that day, but hopefully, like, someone interesting shows up to work. I know kind of uh, Asuka showed up at like a Barnes and Noble, so that would be awesome. I have to bring myself on that day. Remind me. I have to charge my cell phone up too a little bit. No, it's a hundred percent. That's okay. Should I bring it to work? Nah. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see everyone.